at the moment what we've got is uh, certainly in America anyway we've got six big corporations that control what 90% of, of their media and I get the feeling that we're not too far behind really in fact some of those corporations do control some of our media well Mick we've gone from a situation in the 1980s where we had something like 30 or 40 reasonably large media businesses including lots of different substrata of the BBC I mean they used to have many different newsrooms uh, and also very pretty much independent views from different parts of the country of the BBC. If you think about the way ITV used to work, you had all these different regions. Uh, there were something like 15 regions around the country. And each of them was owned by a proprietor who wanted to sort of... There was, a, there was a, some genuine competition. They wanted to be the big ITV region that was doing all the hard-hitting programmes. And so they were vying with each other to enlighten the public more than the next region. I mean, for example, uh, Granada TV in Manchester got an incredible reputation for doing hard-hitting documentaries with World in Action. Um, then there, were, uh, there was a This Week, which was a different region. I think from memory that was Southern region, something like that. Uh, and they all, each of them had their flagship programs, and each of them would be trying to get the major airtime on the national ITV networks. Uh, and now that, that has slowly crumbled as ITV has crumbled into one uh, business and we, we're now in a situation where there's literally just a handful of national uh, broadcast media uh, a lot of what you hear on the BBC will be the same on one channel as another channel as on TV as on radio it's really homogenous and exactly the same with the other channels um, ITN uh, doing the Channel 4 News and the ITV News uh, and then, of course, Sky, who now do what, what used to be independent radio news, which well, is not independent anymore. It's just a part of the Murdoch Empire. So we're, we're, we're in a situation now completely different with just a handful of people deciding what is important and what isn't important every day in our news media here in Britain. Uh, and a large part of this is this sort of battle that's going on between the Murdoch Empire and the BBC. So we're seeing all sorts of um, you know, bad things that have been going on at the BBC. This is being exploited to the maximum by the Murdoch Empire in order to discredit the BBC because he's on the record before the last election in 2010 as saying that the BBC is basically unfair competition because it's subsidised by the taxpayer. And of course, he's right. But the thing is that the, there are so few big players in the game that there isn't any real competition anyway. And I can guarantee you, if the BBC gets privatised as Murdoch wants it to be, then you won't get any kind of real plurality. And also, that the Murdoch channels will be even further dumbed down than they are already. And that's been the overall effect of this, is uh, because of uh, less advertising revenues coming into the terrestrial channels, is a massive dumbing down of television. So far, far less money being spent on every hour of TV that we watch. As the TV networks get into debt, they become much more reliant on advertising, and they basically what they do is they provide television programs and radio programs, the uh, independent people anyway, that the advertisers want. So it becomes the whole of what we see in here, uh, and broadcast media particularly, just becomes a conveyor belt to the advertisers. The advertisers call the shots, they say, we want this kind of program, that kind of program. And uh, the, the idea of any kind of real editorial independence slowly starts to crumble. But there is, I mean, there are a few bits of light at the end of the tunnel in that... Um, Recently, we've seen a bit of a, a surge in the investigative series Dispatches, which is, is, uh, is uh, you know, this competition from the BBC in Panorama, but Dispatches has been doing a far, far better job. Mm. It only seems that Panorama only ever seems to do anything uh, useful or interesting when uh, Dispatches is, is particularly good, or, or maybe if, I mean, as we saw with the Jimmy Savile scandal, Newsnight just fails to report it. I mean, that is actually the modus operandi now in the BBC. Is anything big and controversial that they might possibly get sued for, they just don't even bother starting the research process. They, they, what they do is completely safe subjects. I mean, we've, we've got incredible amount of uh, interesting material around at the moment that, that documentaries could be being made about. I mean, what about this whole business of weapons of mass destruction in Syria? The chemical weapons, for example, no investigative documentaries into that uh, because it seems as if that's going to uh, reflect badly on the Foreign Office uh, trying to do another Iraq in Syria. And so they steer clear of these fascinating subjects, which in the old days would have been looked into properly. Uh, so overall, uh, I mean, we're seeing a kind of 
uh, attack really on any kind of proper independent journalism in parallel with the attack on our political system. So as the banks start to become more powerful, I mean, what's happened is they were, I mean, I was looking at the figures the other day, 850 billion pounds of our taxpayers' money and our kids' taxpayers' money was spent on bailing out these failed banks uh, back in 2008, 850 billion. And that money is now going by those banks into lobbying. You know, that's what they're doing. Is they're lobbying both the, uh, our broadcast media, our news, uh, newspaper media, and our politicians into shaping the country in their interests. And that's the frightening thing. Is it's almost like a kind of financial takeover. The way I would describe it is, uh, is back in World War II, Hitler used to use tanks rolling into towns to take over. Nowadays, it's just money and banks taking over. If you notice, many small businesses, in fact, many of them very, very good businesses, have been crumbling in the face of these massive multinationals who do tax avoidance schemes. And these, of course, these, these multinationals are all financed by the banks. And the banks have a tremendous amount of discretion. Say, for example, you, know, you as an individual uh, proprietor of a massive multinational want to investigate uh, a new market in genetically controlled crops so that all of the food that's being grown by farmers right across the Asian continent, for example, or here in Britain, uh, they have to come to you for the seeds, that the, uh, the, the, the natural seeds have been polluted, messed around with, and that you have to get seeds from them. This, this is a potential massive market. So the banks will finance research and scientific research into this genetically modified Frankenstein food, you know, the Terminator technology. Mm. If it works out, then that's fine. Then they can start making loads of money out of it uh, and out of us and exploiting us. If it doesn't, what happens is the company goes back to the bank and then they say, oh, well, we're very sorry, but this technology didn't quite work. And the bank, all the bank does is it shakes them by the hand, buys them lunch and say, forget about it, don't worry about it. The banks have the discretion to either cancel the loans, to write those loans off if they politically like what the activity that that business is doing, or to actually close a company down. Now, mo most small businesses will find that when they're not doing very well, the bank's not going to just simply forget the loan. It's going to come and it's going to basically take over that individual's business. It's going to sell off all, the, all their assets. It's going to probably take their home, that possibly their, the home of their spouse and other shareholders uh, or other directors in the company, and close them down. So this is the power the banks now have. It's basically to either close down businesses or else to um, start up new ones that can survive on funny money and that don't even need to make a profit. And that goes for, for media companies too, of course. You know, it's very, very difficult to compete in the media world now where, uh, I mean, particularly in London, it's very obvious that, that all the newspapers are free. You don't pay for a new newspaper. I mean, how could anybody set up a newspaper in London and survive? Almost impossible when all your competition is being given away for nothing. So you've got that side of things, and then you've also got uh, the political parties which are being taken over. I mean, essentially, the top ends of all the political parties are now uh, uh, singing from the same hymn sheet. They all believe in this sort of global financial debt. Now, none of this debt is going to be repayable, completely impossible. After we've taken out this extra £850 uh, billion pounds worth of debt, there's no way that's ever going to be paid back. We're in a debt spiral or a death spiral. And uh, the one solution to all of this for everybody and the nation which is looking at uh, not repaying this debt, defaulting on it, is the one thing that's not on the table. It's taboo. I mean, it's almost like we're over in the South Sea Islands dancing around as uh, sort of uh, taboo natives because we're not allowed to talk about the simplest solution to our financial difficulties.